Welcome to Make Possible Bite Size, a weekly podcast brought to you by Permutive, championing change in publishing, advertising and beyond. Each episode, we chat to an inspiring guest about their careers, their lives and how they're making change possible. Let's bite right in. Hey everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in. It's been over a year since we've experienced global lockdown, and since May is Mental Health Awareness Month, our friends and I thought it'd be helpful to talk about our experiences this past year in a lockdown environment. The aim is to show everyone out there that someone like you is going through something similar and that perhaps we can learn from one another uh, to remain resilient. I'd like to thank Permutive for making this possible and for BOP for creating the conversational platform to shed light on this topic. In the description, we've provided a few resources on mental health. Uh, please have a look and share them with your loved ones. For the, today's discussion, I have my friends Katya, Earl, and Brandon, who also work in media with me. Uh, let the world know who you are. Thanks, Don. I'll go first. And I think this is a really important conversation. So thank you for having us along. We're all definitely not alone. But just by way of intro, my name is Katya Abasi. I'm an Australian expat living in NYC, in case my accent didn't give me away. And I'm a finance writer. I'll go next. I'm Earl Pinkett, Partnerships Director at Dosh. I'm originally from Ohio, but I've been in New York for over 10 years now and absolutely loving it. Pleasure to be on this platform and definitely uh, having the conversation that needs to happen for every single person out there. Thanks, guys. Wanted to echo uh, Katya and Earl and Don. Thank you for having me on the platform. My name is Brandon Manny. I'm a programmatic platform manager working at the Walt Disney Company uh, out of New York, but currently located uh, down in South Jersey in our uh, in our lockdown world here. Um, really happy to be talking about this, especially during Mental Health Awareness Month. It's amazing. I'm super excited and happy to share our friendship uh, and all your insights with the world. Uh, joining Brandon in New Jersey as myself, uh, I moved from Lincoln Center to uh, Hoboken, um, and it's, it's, it's all right. I, I definitely do truly miss the city and wish I could be with Kathy and Earl right now. No offense, Brandon. <laughs> <I'm good. laughs> I know we all joke about burnout. Um, doesn't matter what side of the industry you're in, and it doesn't matter what your job function is. We've seen the memes on IG, and though we laugh because it's true, uh, perhaps uh, not as funny anymore. Uh, let's start off with Katya. How has the work from home environment been this past year and how has life in general in the lockdown environment been for you? Yeah, for sure. So I came across the New York Times article the other day talking about the word languishing and how that describes all of us. So on the outside, we're okay, but on the inside, we're just feeling really blah and meh. And that is exactly how I've been feeling recently. The past year has been super challenging. I'm on the other side of the world from my family, which is always a struggle. But in terms of remote work, I wasn't new to remote work by any means. Um, i have been doing it for several years beforehand to, to some extent or another. But I just found that I was lacking a sense of purpose almost. So, you know, the world was falling around us and just my work did not feel important, even though it really is purposeful work. And I do help people make financial choices every single day. So it is purposeful by definition, but I just didn't feel like doing it. And I just didn't, it's like, it just seemed unimportant in the scheme of things. And I thought that was really challenging. Mm. And in terms of life in general, I mean, living in a beautiful, but tiny New York city apartment presented as challenges. Um, both my boyfriend and I are very social people and we're so used to being out and about and kind of just treating our apartment like, you know, an escape or a sanctuary. But when it became our sanctuary 24-7, it didn't feel like that anymore. And on that note, he is actually on this podcast. If he wants to reveal himself, <laughs> I'll pass it on. There you go. I'm revealed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say, you know, I'm from Ohio. And so from the perspective of being from Ohio, you move to New York, you, you love the activity, the energy, um, and, you know, adding in a sales role where you're used to feeding off people's energy. Uh, I would say my core driver is, you know, really just meeting people, getting to understand them, know them, 
um, you know, respect their story, uh, especially, you know, if I can at any point in moment, give them any advice or tips. Uh, but mostly I'm just listening, hearing, and, you know, actually probably better understanding myself by learning about someone else. So with a lockdown, with, you know, recession in you know, full flow, I lost a bit of that. I lost all of that, to be honest. So, really, <laughs> okay, yeah. you know, trying to, <laughs> trying to, you know, find new ways to approach the same type of energy is harder. Uh, connections are, you know, even more difficult. But uh, overall, uh, I truly feel that this lockdown has been, in a way, kind of a, you know, a reckoning. You know, it's just a way to look at yourself, find out new ways to motivate you. Um, although difficult, um, you know, finding kind of like your center, right? You know, everyone needs to, you know, rebalance, if you will, since we're all tipped on one side or the other. Uh, so this this whole lockdown experience has been a kind of um, really almost like a midlife crisis uh, shortened within a year that had to be solved. And, you know, it's possible. I feel, I feel yeah. you. And and then like uh, with, with, with us, like, you know, er, Earl and I being on like the BD and then Brandon, you know, being in an operations role, right? Like, having to deal with a bunch of salespeople and BD people trying to, um, you know, talk to you all the time. Uh, how has like your perspective been this past year? Yeah, I was going to echo um, a lot of what Katya and Earl had mentioned there. You know, the, for me, I, a lot of what I do is much more technical and kind of behind the scenes. So being able to, cut out the part of my day where I was commuting and focus more on work was beneficial, I think, for the better part of last year, because it allowed me to refocus the part of my life um, outside of work. And it kind of showed me, you know, who was important in my life and kind of who was the superficial relationship. Um, I, you know, I think it brought a lot of my relationships closer. Um, Don, I think you and I got a little bit closer over everything. And uh, just having more meaningful conversations with people through this, the, through the quarantine. I will say now, more than a year into this, I do miss being with people in general. I have started yes. missing <laughs> my actual commute and uh, seeing people face to face. The burnout from just being in front of a screen or being on a phone, it, you know, there's only so many times you can kind of ask somebody how you doing and you get the same response uh, just <laughs> through the phone conversation, you know, um, being able to kind of sit back and have have a drink with somebody or, or break bread in some way uh, is definitely being missed. But I do think that there's a there's a flip side to that coin where the relationships in our lives that we were able to focus on particular relationships and bring them closer, even with my family members who are around the world. I had conversations with them via FaceTime and reconnected with, with them um, where I wouldn't have done that in the quote unquote normal uh, world that we were living in before. So in some ways, I'm grateful uh, that it was able to bring me closer to people who I haven't been able to connect with in the past. But in other ways, I'm starting to feel that that burnout, that languish feeling uh, that we were no. talking about. That's so like, yeah, that's, it's so amazing how like, you know, this, this, that, this discussion just went like full circle from starting with language. And then like now, now like you've, you, you've uh, uh, reintroduced it. And then like, I mean, on, on my end, um, you know, like, uh, like what, to what Earl was talking about, I, like uh, with, uh, you know, getting to meet people and being social. I feel like you guys know me. Like I, I, I love to just be out there, just like not just talking shop, but meeting new people hearing everyone's stories. And I think the silver lining uh, for me this year was uh, having a child uh, during uh, lockdown. Would I have been able to know my son in a regular environment? Um, granted, or like, like trying to deep, like, uh, like, you know, deeply think out like a business problem, write a very constructive email. And all of a sudden you get the, Hey Don, can you change the diaper? That doesn't happen in the office. You know what I mean? Like I didn't, I didn't read this part in Shoe Dog where Phil Knight had to uh, stop Nike operations to go change diapers. Like that, that wasn't in the book. <laughs> but, um, but to everyone's point, I think um, you know, with the new environment of being isolated, you definitely did have to 
uh, go through challenges this past year, and you also had to find silver lining into uh, people and scenarios and things that you didn't, um, you know, that you actually like took for granted. Um, with that said, um, Earl, what type of techniques, specific techniques and activities did you do this past year uh, to stay mentally resilient uh, during this time? Even before the pandemic, uh, I always felt the gym was my therapy session. Um, and then, of course, with gyms being shut down, that was, you know, my own internal crisis, as well as I'm sure many other people. So finding creative ways to actually stretch the legs, get outside, get fresh air, you know, yell, scream, uh, <laughs> whatever you need to do to really just release yourself. Uh, and then, you know, I would say two more points. Another one is just like find a way to have a laugh, you know. Everything is so serious. Everything is so tragic. Just find a way to enjoy a moment, you know, with your partner, with a friend. Um, honestly, just like having a safe uh, meetup just refuels the tank. I think we're all a bit drained um, from many different sides. And one side is let's meet up. Let's actually, you know, find some common ground and let's like try to rebuild what we lost during this time period. Uh, another thing I would say is, you know, everyone had to refigure or sorry, configure their workspace, which is their home. I think everyone is now, you know, working out in their home, they're eating and sleeping, they're congregating, they're socializing. There's every single activity is now confined to a New York apartment space, which is not built for that. So just finding some greenery, you know, I bought a cactus during the time. Um, I might be able to show it here. Play. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very creative name. We got it. Yeah, just find some joy there. You know, have a laugh there. Uh, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, so yeah, I would say those are my main points there. Super cool. I'll actually, I'll, I'll build on that. Uh, Earl, you mentioned that you know being able to have a laugh. One of the things that's echoed with me since the time I was a child. Uh, both my parents work in the medical field, and. Um, they both always said to my brother and I, laughter is the best medicine. And of course, after too much laughing comes crying. So we always took it to the extreme until someone got hurt. But, <laughs> but finding a way to laugh in the midst of something that is truly world changing uh, is definitely important, right? So I definitely feel you on that point and being able to find those silver linings and have those moments of clarity and sanity are definitely important in this time. I'll also add to that. So I'm an eternal optimist and that was definitely tested many, many times last year. <laughs> and yeah. to yeah, to this day, I need to go on several walks, even if it's just around the block. Like I need to get outside of this apartment and just see something different, eavesdrop on conversations, people watch, like whatever it is, I need to be outside. That was my first coping mechanism. I would say the second one is, I call them my woo-woos, but like kind of Eastern medicine type things like acupuncture, facial reflexology, you know, any kind of self-care. Like I really, really dove into that last year and now I'm obsessed and all can attest <laughs> to that. So it's just about taking, you know, stealing a few minutes here and there in your day to just do something for yourself. And in terms of my work environment, what I started doing was just blocking out hours in my calendar where I was like, I don't want anyone to Zoom me because I have extreme Zoom fatigue. And in my role, I just don't need to be on calls all day. Like most of my calls can be meetings and people really respected that. So I think like setting boundaries helps me as well. That's awesome. I think uh, for the mental resiliency part of this past year, um, I definitely ran a lot more than I've done uh, in the past, if, if you guys could believe that, like, I know, like, uh, I've, I've run cross country and I've, uh, I've uh, like, you know, in the, in the military, but like, I, I actually like truly, truly hate running. Right. Like, and then once they took the gym away for, for a few months, um, you know, like I, I ran all over New York city throughout the summer. And that was, uh, that part of the day outside of, you know, helping out with the family where, um, I looked for, like, you know, that was something to look forward to, um, to just get the fresh air, get the blood flowing, be one with New York City 
outside of a bar. Do you know what I mean? So like is um getting to see like all the way uptown, running all the way downtown, you know, like based out of uh, uh, Lincoln Center. It was interesting, not interesting, but it was, it was nice to, to run into Earl uh, on a Riverside Park uh, a couple times. I think, oh, yeah, there's is, is around, like, what was that? Um, by, um, by the edge of Riverside Park right before um, the Intrepid. Those, those, yep. the, those are, like, you know, the, those are moments that probably don't happen uh, prior to lockdown because I'm not running outside. I'm not running either. Yeah, I'm not running that far outside. Um, and I think um, outside of, you know, just, you know, in addition to going outside, uh, one of the things that I also tried to implement in my life was um, I wasn't so good about, like, blocking off my calendar, like Katya. Like, you, you guys see me. Like, I, I think Rob will attest he's behind the scenes that I, I, I really don't sleep. <laughs> but um, I, I really do, like, um, if, if, if I was interested in a topic, if, uh, like, with, like, you know, the, everything going on in the world, try to uh, surround myself and immerse myself in that subject for at least, like, 30 minutes to an hour a day, just so, um, you know, like, our perspective can't really grow in an isolated environment, like physically, but what can I do in this apartment, in this, you know, in, in this quarantine to um, elevate my perspective? So those are like the two main things that I tried to, um, you know, just have on a, a, on a daily basis. And on like for the third question um, that I'd like to ask you guys, and what we'll go with Brandon is um, this past year, right? Like we, we talked about uh, what uh, work and life were like. And we talked about uh, stuff we implemented to stay mentally resilient. What are things that you wish you did better uh, this past year? It's a great question. I think one of the things that I wish I would have done better is focused on the self-improvement aspect more. So I spend a lot of time working. I kind of grew a side hustle uh, through this pandemic to attempt to help some people. Um, and all of that's great and good. And, you know, I was able to buy a house with uh, the extra income that all of that brought. But I feel like I lost something on the physical health side, right? Like I didn't focus on exercising. I didn't focus on uh, the physical health um, that I was dealing with. Not that I'm in bad health, but it didn't uh, improve much through that time. So I kind of wish I would have taken more advantage of that side of it. Um, it's one of those things, you know, we were talking a little bit before about what we did to improve our resiliency through this. And the other part was, I think everybody through the course of 2020 kept looking for when do we think the vaccines are going to come out? When do we think we're going to return to the office? You know, it was all this future looking kind of when's the date for all of these things to happen. And there was some there was a podcast that I found really late uh, in 2020 uh, by a former Navy SEAL commander who talked about changing your event horizon. Um, and I kind of yeah, wish I had. Sorry, is this David Goggin? This is uh, Rourke Denver. Oh, okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. Awesome. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Rourke. No, all good. Um, so Rourke Denver, just a little bit of background for this group. He's a retired Navy SEAL commander, led all three parts of Navy SEAL training, ran operations in Afghanistan and Iraq, uh, and was in the movie Act of Valor. Um, so he talks about during SEAL training, right, they had to run missions off of a boat and paddle into shore at night and then run the operation and then paddle back out to the boat. And they started at two miles offshore and then went to five miles, then 10 miles, up to 50, up to 75. And after 75 miles, the senior officer in the class finally said to the instructor, he goes, you know, I think the one thing we can take away from this is that the longer these, the longer we launch, the more we have to paddle, the harder these missions get to run. And after that, that was the lesson of what they were trying to uh, instill in them. So the overall goal that I took away from it was the more we can extend our vision of how long we think this is going to go on, the easier it becomes. 
you know, if we say this is going to last for this decade until 2030, well, then two years, six months, it doesn't seem that bad that we have to get through, right? And that's how I've kind of been reshaping my mind to think about this pandemic in general, right? There will be events that happen during that where we can return to the quote unquote new normal of uh, return to office and return to doing things. But this is going to have lasting effects and it's going to come through innovations and technologies and disruptive uh, parts of everything that we do. So I think being accepting of those changes and being able to look at those changes, not as a bad thing from the traditional way that we used to do it or a change in the way that it used to be done, but as a good thing of this is embracing the new world. This is more inclusive uh, with everything going on in our world. This is embracing new technology and looking at that event horizon further out and how this will impact the world, not just in 2030, but at 2050 and beyond uh, within our lifetimes has kind of filled me with a renewed sense of encouragement to move forward through this and kind of drive me forward, even in my own work, right? Designing and building new technology um, to improve uh, what our users do on a daily basis has been, I think, exciting. Absolutely. I'm 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 motivated right now. I'm re I'm ready to <laughs> like after that after that like I'm ready to run through a wall. <laughs> yeah, send us that podcast, please, Brandon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I, I think I think we're coming up. I think we got more content, Brandon. We let's talk after this. Definitely, definitely. For sure. Um, <laughs> one thing that I wish I had done earlier in terms of mental resilience is I wish I had been completely honest about what I was feeling or going through from the get go. So I have this really big character flaw where I don't like burdening people. So like I always tend to downplay, like if I'm talking to my friends at the start of the pandemic, I'm like, oh, I'm okay. Like it's fine. This will pass. But then what happened was that I was complaining to Earl all the time. And that's not fair because he shouldn't be everyone to me, right? Like he, he's my partner in life, but he shouldn't be all things to me. I need to like spread out my complaints and my discussions. And I think I reached a point probably in summer of last year when I was like, you know what? Who cares? Like, I know everyone's feeling the same way I am. So I'm just going to start having these really honest conversations with my friends and my family members overseas. So anytime they ask me, how are you doing? I was like, oh, you know, like not so good, actually. And I feel like those kind of conversations made our friendships and relationships stronger. And I also think it helped my romantic relationship in that I wasn't constantly going to Earl and complaining to him. Like, of course, I still went to him about things especially work but I'm trying I'm trying to be better about that and yeah that's something I wish I had done earlier that's all good like I mean like uh you, you know you know the the things where uh one, one of those mantras was like you know don't don't take work home from the office what happens when the office becomes home or like when vice versa do you know I mean so like I mean it's I'm not playing devil's advocate Earl I'm just saying like, it's, it's just been a different year as well. Yeah. I mean, it's also completely <laughs> unnatural to spend 24-7 with your partner, right? Like, I would come home from work. He would come home from work pre, pre-COVID, pre pre-C, and we would tell each other about our days. But now he hears everything I'm doing. So yeah. it's a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, I would say, of course, you know, come to me whenever. I can take it. But, uh, <laughs> you know. As your partner becomes your coworker, uh, and during a pandemic, it's not all sunshine and rainbows every day, right? You know, like people work together all the time, partners especially, but then that's fine. But at the same time, it's, you know, everything is, uh, I think, to a, a multiplier effect at times negative. I think, you know, not, not spreading the good news is something that we've missed in 2020. Uh, hopefully we'll get back to that afterwards. But um, I would say for my whole you know, hindsight 2020, haha, uh, it's protecting your peace. Uh, I think in the beginning, I know in the beginning, I was watching the news first thing in the morning, I would keep it on the background, I'd watch the stock market crash, I'd watch um, pretty much every single, you know, sad social justice moment, I was watching everything tragic, because everything tragic was on TV. So protecting your peace, as well as turning off your push notifications, we have 
ESPN reporting on world news, right? You know, like what, what is that? Yeah. Hollywood Reporter yeah. sending me the same thing that a CNN would send me. That is not diversification of information. That is just draining. So as we are pulled down and drained by what we need to intake, uh, we need to reverse that flow and push back, you know, like get your energy back, protect your peace, find your center, uh, and really just stick to day by day, you know, moment by moment, tackling one problem at a time. The world can't be solved in one heroic effort. Effort. It needs to be solved by many people uh, slowly, but with progress. Absolutely. And like you said earlier, Errol, you know, finding those moments to laugh in between there, right? You know, protecting your peace, I think, is just like finding those moments to to be happy, to kind of find your mental space and check out and unplug. I would say it was one of those things where someone had to say, it's, it's okay to be happy. It's okay to laugh. It's okay to have a moment. Yeah. You know, we have many of the emotions within us. We suppressed one of them very heavily, and I think that's not okay. I, I think one thing that I wish I did better this past year would definitely um, prioritize the work, like yeah, yeah, work, and then family, and then not linking up with you guys as often as possible, like during the um, during lockdown. Um, and you know, like everyone always talks about, like oh, like yeah, like it wasn't safe. But like I've, I've seen, I've seen like you know throughout. Uh, maybe I shouldn't be looking at other people's like Instagrams and stuff like that. But I've seen everyone like you know figure out a way to, you know, just see each other like twenty feet apart and you know just take time uh, during the weekend just to just just to say hello in person instead of just like you know like the like Facetimes or whatever. I, I, I wish I wish I got to see uh, friends more. Uh, this past year and like I know like you know we're all getting vaccinated now um, and we are sh sh slowly but surely going back to somewhat normal and I, I, I hope I don't overcompensate because the Earl's gonna have to babysit a lot once uh, we get back to <laughs> the quote-unquote normal I don't, I don't think my wife likes that but <laughs> anyways anyways we miss um, you yeah, though we want to see you yeah I, I miss I miss all you guys and then like you know like um Brandon, you know, his office is around Lincoln Center, too. So, like, we, 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 have, a, we have a lot of catching up to do. Um, with everything uh, that we talked about, like, um, do you guys have, like, any uh, last words or anything that you, you want to leave off the audience? I, I'll, I'll kick us off on just last words. I think just a quick summary, because I really agree and have really appreciated the conversation that we've had here today. You know, through the pandemic and having this time to ourselves, I think one of the hardest things is getting to know yourself and find to be very direct and honest to your authentic self inside. You know, uh, like Katya was saying, um, having those honest conversations just with yourself and someone who is trusted to you and to build those relationships uh, and find that that way to extend your, your event horizon. Um, is what's important to me through all of this and what I take away uh, from at least 2020 and it's carrying well into 2021. <laughs> Super cool. Anyone else with so, last words? Okay. Yeah, I'll go. Yeah. Um, I think a silver lining that came out of the whole lockdown and is still coming out of it is that there really is no stigma about struggling with mental health. Like that, that is out the window now. Everyone is so upfront and honest about it. And I think that is amazing. So Don, thank you again for bringing us all together for this conversation. Thank you so much for participating. Yes, thank you, Don. And I cannot wait to babysit you. I am just praying for the moment and day that I get to hold you while you have the best time of your life. Because that is what friends are for and that's what life should be about. But uh, as Brandon was saying, you know, finding your authentic self and Katya too, just being okay with not being okay. Um, and again, back to Don with Instagram, it's like people are, you know, hanging out, traveling. I realized that I became kind of a grumpy old man, um, yeah. and by seeing Instagram, like they shouldn't be doing that. And I look out my window and there's a rooftop I can see, and there's always like a birthday party or some type of gathering. I have no idea what's happening. I can't hear it, but children are playing and adults are having a good time. And I literally look out the window and I'm like, they shouldn't be doing that. They, they should not. It should not be enjoying this moment. And why am I doing that? You know, 
like let, let me just take a you know a moment a step back and you know not be um, you know a baby boomer uh, let's just be the, who I am and I'm an optimist and I'm a happy person so let me go back to what I was in 2019 and before because that was yeah. the real me um, the real me was also in 2020 because internally I'm able to be upset frustrated angry and that's okay but moving forward let's again try to find that balance protect the peace um, and be our authentic selves. So thank you, Brandon and Katya and Don for, you know, obviously participating and being a part of this conversation. Excellent. And, and you know what, like, I, I think we'll end on that note. Um, I want to thank my beautiful friends for sharing their experiences from the past year and making themselves available, vulnerable, and relatable for everyone out there. Um, I also want to thank you, the listener, uh, the viewer, for your time and checking out this, this, this discussion on mental health. Um, next week, uh, we'll be returning with friends from the healthcare industry. Uh, that will be a little bit more scientific than the media industry. Uh, so we'll see. But thank you so much for joining, and uh, we'll uh, talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.